Volkswagen will build its first North American electric vehicle battery factory in St. Thomas, Ontario, set to start production in 2021. Volkswagen says it chose Ontario after considering plants in other parts of North America. So how did the feds and province convince the automaker to call Ontario home in the face of the Biden administration's fierce push for auto sector investments? And what kind of money will Ottawa have to spend to secure more deals like this one? Francois-Philippe Champagne is Canada's industry minister. Hi, Minister. Good to have you on our program. Thank you for making the time. Thank you for inviting me. It's a big day for Canada. It, it sure is. And, and I wanted to start off actually on that and ask you if there was ever a point during these negotiations where you felt that the introduction of the IRA would, would lose the case for us, essentially, to land this plant. Well, it's been months in the making. Uh, you know, we've been, this all started with a phone call and then a number of meetings. I was in Wolfsburg. Uh, where Volkswagen have the headquarters uh, a number of times. And, and finally, we, we walked through every step. We made the case for Canada. And, and I think today um, it's a great moment to celebrate. Like I said, it's, it's a big vote of confidence for Canada. It's a big vote of confidence for the auto sector. But it's also a big vote of confidence for the auto workers. And I always say that, Vashi, because it's thanks to their excellence, the expertise, know-how, that you can convince uh, auto manufacturer like Volkswagen, the largest in the world, depending on the years you're looking at, uh, when they have a choice to go anywhere in the world, that their first gigafactory overseas is in Canada. This is huge. Can I ask you, though, explicitly what you had to do to show them the value of Canada? And, and, and specifically, I'm asking, when you talk about them, they could go anywhere. We've heard from other companies in other industries specifically talk about their their desire to go to the U.S. because of the investment climate the IRA has created. So what did you have to do specifically in this case to counter that in the U.S.? Well, there's five things that really bring investment to Canada. The first thing is talent. And I think the world realized Canada is a big magnet for talent. Uh, the second thing is the ecosystem. I think that, that manufacturers around the world appreciate and recognize the strength of the ecosystem in the automotive sector, among others. Uh, the fact that we are the only Western nation with all the critical minerals and, and with very high standard when it comes to, to labor laws, environmental laws, and uh, reconciliation with First Nation. The fourth, I would say, renewable energy, because um, all these big manufacturers want to decarbonize. And fifth is access to market. I never talk about Canada as a country of 38 million people, but as a country which gives you preferential market access to 1.5 billion consumers. So. Uh, you have a lot of things going on for Canada, the talent, the renewable energy, the access to market. I appreciate all the points you made about, uh, about the competitive advantages we do have in this country. But I'm, uh, in addition to what you laid out, I'm going to ask you very bluntly, Minister, did you have to sure. cut them a check and how big of one? Well, listen, you always have to be part of the, I always say government have to be part of the equation when you come to these large investments. You mentioned the Inflation Reduction Act in the United States. You will recall that in the fall economic statement, we said that uh, we intend to, to level the playing field, that we would be selective. Um, so obviously, government have to be a part of the equation. Uh, but I would say, Vashi, you never win on the money uh, because there are jurisdictions who can offer far more uh, than what Canada can ever offer. So you have to push other factors. For example, like I said, the talent of our workers, uh, the proximity to critical minerals, the fact that renewable energy is the way to go. And I appreciate all those points, and I'm certainly not trying to take away from them, but it's a really long-winded way of not, not answering, Minister, the, the original question I posed. No, what, am I to sure. interpret from your answer that the federal government did invest, did cut the company a check, and again, I'm going to ask on behalf of Canadians, I'm not saying the investment isn't a worthwhile one, but how significant is it? How big is the size of the check you had to cut? So I'll answer very clearly your question. Canada... Uh, had to be part of the equation. And I'm not going to go into the details because we have discussions with many others. So discussions are commercially sensitive. But as always, Vashi will recall, we always, we always make uh, that information public in due course. But you would appreciate, as you're doing for Canadians, I'm the one negotiating on their behalf. So I need to make sure that what's commercially sensitive as we have discussions with many players in the industries, uh, in many sectors, uh, at this moment, that would not be appropriate but that the information will be disclosed in due course, as we always do and we, when we have these major investments. I guess I, I just want, I'm wondering what due course means, and, I, and I'll, frame, I'll tell you why I'm asking. Because 
This sure. is a huge win, as you've explained, in, in, in the uh, context of the IRA, right? We are competing very directly with the United States for landing a plant like this. They have put out more than $300 billion worth of subsidies. You've said in the past, in the finance minister, we can't go toe to toe. But if you are writing a check in the billions and you need to for the next one and the next one and the next one, I'm trying to get a sense for people watching of what the IRA necessitates from a fiscal perspective from the government, the scope well, of the response, said is it, it $6 billion a plant? Let me say very, very clearly to all the viewers, uh, what we said is that we're going to level the playing field and we're going to be selective. That's what you're seeing today. Uh, but when it comes to, to all uh, you know, the details around the investment, uh, we're going to keep that for a moment when we can disclose that. And the reason is, Vashi, as you know, is because uh, you know, we are in discussions with many in the ecosystem, and you know, these information are commercially sensitive, as you know, because you negotiate. The difference, I think, in Canada, like we said, we're going to be selective, and like I said, you never win on the money. There's, there's no possibility for Canada to win on that. But so it's necessary to compete. Canada is it has not? to be part of the equation, but you have to put the other factors that I mentioned, which are key to attract these investments. Because, like, let's not forget that even the IRA, this is short-term incentives. These big manufacturers are looking for 50 years of production. So the other things that I mentioned are really relevant to make sure you can land uh, these big investments. And uh, you go back to workers, you go back to greening the supply chain, and that's what uh, makes uh, you know, Canada winning in a very competitive environment, as you said. And, and I'm not trying to take away from any of that, but who, I mean, ultimately, you're going to negotiate with others, and then what, in a year, Canadians will know how much the federal government invests? Again, I'm not trying to say that there isn't merit to the investment, sure. but I do think it's fair for Canadians to know, hey, how much money are we spending in order to counter sure. the IRA? How, is that going to be and disclosed listen, in the budget? Where is, it, where is that? We've been coming? very transparent. I mean, in the fall economic statement, we said we're going to level the playing field. Then we say we're going to be very selective, and I see you see the results of that. It's also fair to Canadians, as they know, because they've seen us in action in many other transactions where we've landed landmark uh, deals. I would say Moderna is one of them. Now you have in the auto sector that it would not be in Can Canadians' best interest uh, to disclose all that now, as we have discussions uh, with all sorts of players in the ecosystem. What I can say to Canadians is that um, you know we uh, said in the Falcon statement that we would be uh, leveling the playing field, we would be selective. And I can assure Canadians that uh, to land an investment like that, which is going to bring thousands of jobs for decades to come, and investments in this plant and to operate these plants for probably 50 years, that this is a great investment for Canadians. And let's take a moment, I would say, okay. Vashi, to celebrate. This is the first time that I'm we land a European manufacturer. And in you, due course, like as we always and I do, part, Rashid, and as we the always do, we'll your, put your, all your the details. Your staff is telling me you have to go, and I have a very just final important question to, to ask you. On you behalf go. of people watching, is there a guarantee from the company on the number of jobs? Um, and if so, how many? Like how many jobs are we talking? And did they guarantee it in writing in, in return for whatever the investment is? Listen, uh, they're talking about gigafactory. So if you look at the size of these gigafactory in the world, you can make demand. I don't want to get ahead of them, but obviously, as we always negotiate, I think Canadians know by now that when we negotiate these investments, uh, there's always uh, you know, commitments with respect to investments, with respect to jobs. And I would say what's great with this one, Vashi, and I know we need to go, but just think about them bringing their entire supply chain in Canada. This is countless opportunities uh, for small and medium-sized businesses uh, in, across the country. Uh, this is good news for Canada. It's good news so for St. Thomas So there is a guarantee for jobs, though? There is commitments with respect to jobs, okay. as we always do, as we always do. And I think, you know what? They're going to exceed that because this is going to be there for 50 years. So something like that, you only have one, I would say, in a generation, and we got one now. Minister, I'll leave it there. Thank you for your time. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for having me.